Hello everyone. We are in lecture number 35 in the lecture series of thermodynamics. It's a very lengthy series and we are we have still three more lectures. Lecture number 35, 36 and 37. So in lecture number 35 our topic of discussion is general criteria for spontaneity and equilibrium. In this regard we have to have some basic concept of equilibrium and spontaneity. A system is said to be in a state of equilibrium if its observable properties do not change with time. So what are the observable properties? The observable properties are actually the pressure, temperature and volume. So if they are not changing then their derivatives must be equal to zero. That means dv equals to zero, dp equals to zero and dt also equals to zero. So a reversible process takes place at the state of equilibrium and an irreversible process takes place at the state of spontaneity. Remember the previous lectures, the lectures at the uh, beginning of this chapter, M most probably in the first lecture, it was discussed that if the system is undergoing a reversible process, then it is, uh, it is attaining equilibrium. And if the system is undergoing some spontaneous change, then it is an irreversible process. Okay, remember. So for a reversible process, the first law of thermodynamics was the reversible heat change is equal to du minus w. And the second law was the reversible heat change is equal to TTS. And if this heat change is irreversible in nature, then this Q reversible, Q irreversible would be equal to du minus w, but this whole amount would be something less than TTS, which is known as the Clausius inequality. Therefore, their combination is actually the combined mathematical form of the first law of thermodynamics, second law of thermodynamics and the Clausius inequality. And their com combined form is actually du minus w less than equal to TTS and its rearranged form is TTS minus du plus w greater than equal to zero. So this is equation number one. Now if the work is mechanical in nature, that means it is PV type of work, then in, instead of W, you can write minus P dV. Okay. So here, uh, only if only PV work is involved, then minus W equals to P dV. Then you can make this equation one into equation two, which would be like this TDS minus TU minus PDV greater than equals to zero and this would be the key equation or the master equation following which we are going to determine the conditions of spontaneity and equilibrium. If this greater than sign is used then the system is undergoing spontaneous change and if the equal sign is used then the system has attained equilibrium okay so let's start from entropy actually in terms of five thermodynamic parameters entropy internal energy enthalpy work function and free energy we're going to uh, derive the conditions of spontaneity and equilibrium so first of all in terms of entropy s so equation 2 this equation 2 is very important most of the times or oh, that means all the times we are going to use this equation number two. Okay, so just memorize this equation: TDS minus DU minus PDV greater than or equal to zero. Now, if we are going to find out in terms of entropy, then we have to just curtail these two things. We have, to, we have to trim these two things. Okay, so in order to trim U and V, we have to make them constant because they are in the derivative form. So. If u is constant, then the system would be described as isodynamic. And if v is constant, then the system would be isochoric. For isodynamic and isochoric change, therefore we have du equals to 0 and dv equals to 0. And in that case, tds greater than equals to 0. And since these two parameters have been made constant, so they are sh being shown as the suffix. Okay. And since S T cannot be zero because absolute zero is not possible here, so only D S is greater than equals to zero. Okay, 
So the final form is ds at constant u and v greater than equals to zero. So if ds is greater than zero, then the system is undergoing spontaneous change. That means s is increasing. Then it is increasing, and this way it will reach to the, it will go to the maxima. And after having this to the maxima, it will be constant. In that case, ds would be equal to zero. Okay. Therefore, entropy increases when the system undergoes spontaneous process while it reaches to the maximum value when the system attains equilibrium provided internal energy and volume of the system are fixed. Now, in terms of internal energy U, okay. So, let's begin again with equation number 2 here. Now, here U is visible. So, what you have to trim? You have to trim these two terms, the first term and the third term. Here, ds, so in order to make ds 0, you have to make s constant. Here also, you have to make v constant. So, the system should undergo isoentropic and isochoric change. Okay. So, for isoentropic and isochoric change, ds equals to 0 and dv is also equal to 0. In that case, the equation is reduced to minus du at constant v and s is greater than or equal to 0. If you eliminate this negative sign, then this greater than sign would become less than sign. Okay. So, in that case, plus du at constant v and s would be less than or equal to 0. So, if the system is undergoing spontaneous change, then it would decrease and this like this, it is decreasing. And finally, at equilibrium, it will reach the minima okay therefore internal energy decreases when the system undergoes spontaneous process while it reaches to the minimum value when the system attains equilibrium provided entropy and volume of the system are fixed now thirdly in terms of enthalpy so we have to start from the equation relationship h equals to u plus pv okay here it's not uh, that much easy like just you are trimming equation number two okay we have to take help of equation number two but before that we have to do some groundwork and this is you have to start from the expression of h in terms of u and pv so its differential dh must be equal to du plus pdv plus vdp okay therefore du is dh minus pdv minus vdp so just put this value of du in equation number two okay and this way in equation number two what we had we had tds minus du minus pdv so in place of minus du we are putting these values so plus dh becomes minus dh minus pdv becomes plus pdv and minus vdp becomes plus vdp okay so this whole thing is greater than or equal to zero now here this plus pdv and minus pdv would cancel out each other then we are getting equation number 3 okay now here h is visible but you have to reduce this equation into only h so you have to trim entropy and pressure so the system should undergo isoentropic and isobaric change okay and in that case you will get this relationship minus dh at constant p and s greater than or equal to 0 or plus ds at constant pressure and entropy it should be less than or equal to 0 so similarly Enthalpy decreases when the system undergoes spontaneous process while it reaches to the minimum value when the system attains equilibrium provided entropy and pressure of the system are fixed. Next in terms of work function A, here also we have to do some groundwork. We know the mathematical expression of A which is U minus Ts and its differential dA equals to du minus Ts minus STT and definitely you have the you can express this in terms of uh, just du okay you can get the uh, relationship of du in terms of all this so du equals to da plus tds plus stt so just put this value of du in equation number two again two then here it was minus du so plus da becomes minus da plus tds becomes minus tds and plus stt becomes minus stt and before DA it was tedious and after DU I'm sorry before DU it was tedious 
and after du it was minus pdb they are also present here as usual and the, in the right hand side you have greater than equals to zero now this uh, minus ts and plus ts would cancel each other after having cancelled them we have got three parameters minus ta minus std and minus pdb which are equal to greater than equal to zero so here a is visible and you have to trim these two parameters so you have to impose the condition of iso thermal and isochoric change okay so for isothermal isochoric change dt equals to zero db equals to zero in that case minus da at constant temperature and volume greater than equal to zero or plus da at constant temperature and volume less than equal to zero okay therefore the helmholtz free energy or the work function decreases when the system undergoes spontaneous process while it reaches to the minimum value when the system attains equilibrium provided temperature and volume of the system are fixed last but not least finally we have in terms of free energy g the similar approach the mathematical expression of g it is h minus ts now h also has its own mathematical expression u plus pv so we put this okay now differentiate both sides tg equals to du plus pdb plus vtp minus tds minus stt now you get the expression of du in terms of all this so du equals to dg minus vdb minus vtp plus tds plus stt okay just you are taking all these four terms to the other side of the equation so they have changed their signs now put this value in equation number two again what you would get you would get td is the first term and minus pd with the third term and the middle term was minus du so just change their signs okay plus dg becomes minus dg minus pdb becomes plus pdb and so on and finally we get in the right hand side greater than equal to zero so what are getting cancelled plus pdb minus pdb uh, then minus tds plus tds so what are left here equation number five we have in equation number five along with g we have vdp and minus stt okay so you have to make the condition impose the condition of isobaric change and isothermal change therefore for isothermal and isobaric change dt equals to zero and db equals to zero and in that case minus dg at constant temperature and pressure greater than or equal to zero or conversely plus dg at constant temperature and pressure is less than or equal to zero okay so what is the condition of equilibrium and spontaneity definitely g decreases and reaches minima at equilibrium therefore the gibbs free energy decreases when the system undergoes spontaneous process while it reaches to the minimum value when the system attains equilibrium provided temperature and pressure of the system are fixed so that's all for today's lecture the conditions for spontaneity and equilibrium thank you have a nice day